Hi guys, Moody here. I'm going to bring a guide for the Witch Doctor in patch 2.6.8 and Greater Rifts. I've already covered the 16 version, but uh, this is very different from this, so I wanted to make a specific video just for this. And I will cover the basics of the build quickly, then I will go over the group version and then the solo version. Um, there are some similarities, but there's also quite some differences and a lot of details that are very important if you want to optimize your performance. Also, the build is quite different from what you might have seen on the PTR because Blizzard decided to change it uh, at the last minute. And I will go I will go over this and cover it as well. So you, you'll understand the differences. So let's go into the details here. Um, I have the free planners. Unfortunately, I don't have a Witch Doctor on live service. I only have one on the PTR. And the footage you're seeing is also from the PTR but um, it should be fine for this guide. So uh, let's start. We have the Mundunugu's Regalia, which is the new Witch Doctor set. And uh, it's actually the strongest build in the game now, um, apart from uh, a few things on Necromancer for season 20. But um, um, aside from seasonal play, uh, Witch Doctor is going to be the strongest class in both solo and group. And this is why. So this build focuses on Spirit Barrage. Um, this is actually the old tooltip here. So um, on the live service, this has changed. And uh, the six piece bonus gives you a flat 20,000% damage multiplier to Spirit Barrage. And it has like a very minor scaling mechanism where you increase it by another 5% per point of mana regeneration. And realistic values for mana regener regeneration are somewhere between 50 and uh, 700. Uh, so if you multiply this by five, it's not very much and you are not realistically going to increase your DPS by a lot by stacking more mana regeneration. This was very different before and Blizzard decided to uh, make it um, basically basically even it out a bit more um, by giving it a flat value and very little scaling, but it's also changed the build quite a lot. Because previously mana regeneration was everything and now it's really really pointless. So you should avoid mana regeneration at all costs unless you need to actually cast spells. So um, for example, we have Rush of Essence in the setup, and this allows you to regain mana. It's basically 10 mana regeneration for 10 seconds after casting uh, Haunt and also Spirit Barrage. And um, this will easily fuel all your, your mana needs, but it's actually not a, a big DPS increase anymore. So as long as you can cast your spells, you don't need this passive at all. You have to keep this in mind because the setup might still change a little bit. And depending on you know how people optimize it, it's quite hard to tell so early on because um, yeah, we didn't really have much time to test it. So um, you just have to keep this in mind that you know the setup might change slightly depending on what is actually like the most optimal mana setup, etc. But um, yeah, for now, Rush of Essence is really nice because it allows you it basically gives you infinite mana and allows you to cast anything you want. But theoretically, you don't really need it, and you could take much better passes instead. Other than the set, we have the Barber and we have the Gazing Demise, which are also core of the build. Um, the Barber it has a very special interaction with Spirit Barrage, and the way it works is that um, the Spirit Barrage will accumulate damage, and it will not deal any damage until uh, the accumulation explodes. So basically, um, the, you have these phantasms, they're like a circular AoE on the, on the ground of like a little spirit, and uh, they take once every half second, and uh, after 10 seconds they will explode and uh, they, like all the damage they would have done is done in one hit. And um, it also works in the way that um, compared to most other builds, you don't really want to stack all your um, damage multiplies for the big boom, but here it matters for every single tick. So, um, you know, you, you basically put down the phantasms and they will um, keep ticking. And uh, while it's accumulating, you have to, you know, run into Oculus, you want to time it with your COE and so on. But it doesn't matter if you have all these buffs while the explosion happens. Of course, you know, you want to have them up as much as possible, but it doesn't really matter that everything is aligned for the explosion. So, yeah, this is just something to keep in mind. It's basically the reverse of most other builds. The other item is the Gazing Demise, which gives you the Phantasm Rune, and uh, it allows you to use another rune. But um, this is actually um, an important distinction here uh, between group and solo. So in, in group, um, you will have you know, other people keeping you alive. You will uh, handle mana regeneration with a passive, for example, and so on. So you don't really want to change your runes. So you basically want to have double Phantasm Rune, and uh, you want to avoid using any other rune. Because um, the build is n not very laggy anymore. It seems like the, it seems like it, it um, has become a little bit better, but it can still lag out, especially when stuff is not dying very fast on the high tiers. And uh, basically, taking Phantasm Rune twice 
through selecting it and through the gazing device, um, you will not have any other rune effects and that will decrease the lag a little bit. And you know, you're not really gonna get a lot of benefit from any taking any under room. And the gazing device buffs money too a lot, but money too is you know it's not really a source of DPS in groups because you have someone else to kill a boss for you. And um, you know, if money too is mainly used for uh, solo and for T16, so you don't really care too much. It's just like another damage multiplier here. Yeah. Another important piece is the Lacumbas ornament, the bracers for soul harvest. Uh, you definitely want those uh, because the build is relatively squishy. And um, if you combine this with Sacred Harvester, you can quadruple your toughness or something. It's a lot and um, basically a must have. So, um, yeah, Sacred Harvester in the cube, you can also equip it. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They changed the barber to have exactly the same stats as other ceremonial knives, so it's not strictly better anymore. And, uh, in, you know, it's probably easier to actually get the Sacred Harvester because it doesn't have a range on the legendary affix. But you can equip either and cube the other, it doesn't matter. Another important piece is the Ring of Emptiness. It gives you a huge damage buff while something is affected by Haunt or Locust Swarm. Um, here it says Ant, but it's actually Or. So uh, you just need one of them, and this is mainly done with Locust Swarm. So um, you can use uh, Locust Swarm, you can use any rune, and you have to keep in mind that um, the visuals are quite clunky on this, and uh, they don't actually show what it's doing. So what I mean is that um, and when you, when you watch what Locust Swarm does, is it's actually um, jumping from enemy to enemy and then eventually it would stop. And you also don't see the effect on enemies. But it actually works. I've tested this and um, you can see this here that uh, with Pain Enhancer um, and using the physical rune on uh, Locust Swarm, uh, I was actually able to you know get something like um, 150, 180% attack speed. Um, basically everything has a Locust Swarm on it. And um, as, as long as you use the physical rune on Locust Swarm, which is a cloud of insects uh, that also reduces damage done by enemies, um, you can have Pain Enhancer stacks by applying it yourself. Pain Enhancer is actually a very significant um, damage boost in this build uh, because uh, the Phantasms are uh, considered as pets and uh, pets uh, scale with your attack speed in the way that um, attack speed is its own damage multiplier for your pets. So since Phantasms steal all of your damage, they, uh, that is very significant. And uh, in groups, you will reach you know, 100, 200% attack speed. So it's like your best DPS gem. It's like one of your best DPS multipliers. And uh, depending on how big the pull is, you will deal a lot of damage. But there's also some other things um, that could reduce the damage in certain situations, um, depending on, on your playstyle. And I'll go over that in a second. Uh, other than those items, we have um, just generic increases, something like Endless Walk. Um, it's just there to you know buff your damage. Um, we have Convention of Elements. Uh, you want to play around Convention with this build, uh, simply because you can uh, deal a lot more damage with your explosions if you time it well. And basically, the way you do this is you um, you put down a few phantasms, and uh, you can only have three at max. So you want to explode them on purpose basically shortly before your convention. So in this case, um, the cycle goes uh, cold, fire, physical, poison. And uh, during your poison convention, you want to um, force explode your phantasms to spawn an Oculus Ring so you can run into it and put down new phantasms. And then you just let them run, run out and after 10 seconds they will explode for the accumulated damage. That includes you know Oculus plus COE time, which is very, very strong, of course. The other item we have in the cube is the Mask of Jeram. As I mentioned, Phantasms are pets, and this actually works as, um, you know, as increased that damage, and it's very, very strong. And in Season, um, this build doesn't really change at all. Uh, there's only like one other theoretical setup for a very, very, very high end on Season, but I, don't, I doubt it's actually going to be played, and that is, um, you could change the Sacred Harvester to a Squirt's Necklace, uh, so basically you have two jewelry slots and you could increase the damage like this, but you you lose a lot of toughness, like 80% of your toughness or so, and a little of damage. And most likely it's not going to be worth, but theoretically this is the strongest setup. Um, I just wanted to mention it here because, um, you know, you might see someone actually do that. Um, but yeah, most likely it's not going to happen simply because you don't have enough paragons to actually make it work, but maybe. As for the skills, uh, we have the Spirit Barrage. Of course, um, in group, you want to have the double Phantasm, so you select the Phantasm room. 
Um, we have Haunt. Uh, the Poison Haunt is uh, very strong, actually. It's a 20% multiplier. So uh, compared to most other um, skills, this actually buffs your damage quite significantly. And also the damage of your Rift Guardian Killer is very nice to have, um, even though you apply Ring of Emptiness already with Locust Swarm. Uh, we have Soul Harvest, uh, simply for um, you know, buffing your damage, your damage reduction. And it's very nice. Uh, Locust Swarm um, to apply Ring of Antinous ma mainly. And um, we have Spirit Walk, uh, this procs your 4 piece bonus, which gives you damage reduction. You can also proc the 4 piece bonus with Spirit Vessel, but most likely you're not going to run that. And um, you use uh, Spirit Walk for that, which also helps you to survive quite a lot. And we have the Big Bad Voodoo. Um, theoretically, you can run any other skill here, but Big Bad Voodoo is quite strong with the 2 piece bonus, where it lasts um, twice as long. And um, with Ghost Trends, um, you have a very, very strong defensive buff, and you also have a little bit of an offensive buff with uh, the attack speed. So this is very nice to have. The passives, I mentioned Rush of Essence. Uh, again, this is only there to give you enough mana uh, to actually cast your horns mainly. But um, theoretically, you will not need it, and we'll see if that changes. Other than that, you have Grave Injustice. Uh, really good passive because you don't need to stack so much cooldown. You just get um, one second off each cooldown, a little bit like um, Obsidian Ring or Massive Trans River, where um, when you kill stuff, you, you reduce your cooldowns. And we have Gruesome Feast. Um, your support buff is going to use the, the threatening shout that spawns globes. So you'll basically have um, five stacks of this every time. And uh, keep in mind that the stacks have their own individual timer. So uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't suffice to just have you know one globe every 15 seconds to keep it up, but you actually need five globes per 15 seconds. But you also get a lot from killing. And we have Gripping Death, um, simply to um, apply the Haunt and the Locust Swarm more easily. Um, you, should, you should really have this passive. You can run without Creeping Death, uh, but then you won't get much, mad, much out of the Haunt, and you would have to change your Locust Swarm to the, um, the Pestilence Rune, Pestilence is actually very strong. Um, it jumps to, uh, like basically it multiplies the jumps, so it will uh, spread to everything in, in a matter of seconds, but you'll also have to reapply it every, uh, I think, eight seconds. So um, yeah, you'd have, have to cast Love with Swarm quite a bit, but you can save the one passive. But since we have Cloud of Insects, which is also very, very strong rune, um, I would definitely recommend running with Creeping Death. And your legendary gems, uh, we mentioned the Pain Enhancer already. Uh, Bane of Threat, of course, for another DPS boost. And we have the Enforcer, which is basically another Bane of Threat because your uh, Phantasms are pets and they actually get a benefit here. And since you don't really have any other source of damage, like your Haunt and your Locust Swarm is really useless in terms of DPS. So, um, yeah, it's, it's basically another straight multiplier. And we have the Witching Hour. Theoretically, you can run any other belt here because this is just a generic belt that gives you a little bit of damage. So it doesn't matter too much. And you know, if you really want defensive um, options, then you can use something like String of Ears, for example. That's totally fine. Or um, if you really want, you can also use uh, Ring of Fire Granger, and then you can go Captain Crimson, which is actually used in a solo setup, but you could do it in group as well for um, extra damage reduction, extra damage, cooldown, etc. Okay, so this is it for the setup for now. And now for the gameplay, there are some things to keep in mind and that you need to understand if you want to optimize your DPS. So first of all, you want to apply your Ring of Emptiness effect to everything. You usually do this at the start of the pool with uh, Locust Swarm. So you cast it like two or three times and it will keep jumping around until everything is infected. With Creeping Death, you don't have to worry too much about it as long as you don't move too far away. So after going like one or one and a half screens away from the enemy, the effect will stop and you would have to reapply it. Other than that, um, you put down your three Phantasms and you let them start accumulating. And uh, you want to make sure that you time it with your convention cycles or that you, you know, readjust the positioning in case your enemies move around. But uh, generally, in the group play, um, you know, the, the monsters will be quite static and um, you can focus on your timing and uh, positioning of the phantasms a lot more. So you want to uh, explode them uh, around two seconds into your poison convention to set it up for the cold because we're doing cold damage here. And you do this by uh, just casting the Phantasms again. Since you can only have a maximum of three, you can you know just cast it again three times, uh, like one or two seconds into a Poison Convention. And that will usually be enough to you know, explode them, spawn your Oculus, you run to your Oculus, and then you have your, your main Phantasms you know, start accumulating for the big boom. 
And uh, keep in mind, you know, in case the monsters move around and so on, you can also you know keep force exploding your phantasms whenever you want. You just have to recast them. But keep in mind that depending on where you are in the tick cycle, you might lose some ticks because um, they have a t fixed frame rate, a, a fixed tick, a tick rate of uh, 30 frames, and the game runs at 60 FPS. So every half a second, uh, 30 frames have elapsed and one tick will happen. And um, Depending on your attack speed with Pain Enhancer, you might actually be able to uh, spawn Phantasms so quickly that you lose DPS by uh, spamming it. So you might know my fellow streamer and climate SVR. He's done the full math on this build uh, really in depth, uh, not just once but twice. And then he had to scrap one again because Blizzard decided to change the new build at the last minute. So uh, here we are. This is from his uh, old Spare Barrage uh, in depth guide. Um, that he posted uh, like two years ago when uh, this was a build and uh, that was played in Foreman. And here's the most important sheet. And what we see here is um, the, the Phantasm ticks per second depending on your frames per animation. And the frames per animation is basically scaling with your attack speed. And um, what you see here is basically um, how the ticks will evolve depending on uh, your faster attack speed. So you have to read this from uh, right to left because at right we have slow attack speed, at left we have high attack speed. And since you use Pain Enhancer, your attack speed will change quite a lot, depending on the pull size. And we have four different play styles, but the most important one is the channeling and uh, the full. And you should look at, should look at those. So since uh, Spirit Rush ticks at fixed frames, at 0, 30, 60, and so on, um, basically what happens is when you keep casting at uh, certain attack speed breakpoints, you will uh, despawn your phantasms right before one tick happens. You know, for example, you might have an attack speed where um, after 50 frames, you repeat the cycle of three phantasms. So you will get one tick at zero, one tick at 30, and you won't get the one at 60, even though you're very close to it. And you will I actually decrease your DPS because you despawn it without getting the next tick. So this is basically what this graph shows. But other than that, uh, the, the most realistic playstyle, at least in group, is to, you know, just cast Phantasm three times unless you have to readjust the positioning and then you know you have one cycle where um, you have uh, no convention and then you have one cycle with convention and you use the cycle uh, without convention to spawn the oculus and then you know you have like the big boom basically when you run into oculus with convention accumulating and then you know you have like the big pop at the end with uh, the ground stomp you know grouping everything up and uh, it will be um, you know very high dps I put uh, this uh, this link and also like uh, all of SVR's work on the build uh, in the description. So check it out if you want more written details. There are more things to know, and you know maybe just that is just like interesting to know as well. But this is like you know the the, the core from, for for this build, and you know realistically you're not gonna um, do much better by trying to um, to snipe the the right duration on on the phantasms. You know you would probably need some very very advanced scripts. Um, to uh, you know, actually have like frame perfect cast of phantasms and so on. So this is uh, quite unrealistic, and uh, for the most part, you will um, you know just keep an eye on uh, your attack speed, and you know not not just spam away the spirit barrage. Basically, this is the most important part. Make sure you have you play the pro rotation properly, and then you know sometimes you know it might happen that you cast too much or whatever. Um, it's not not the end of the world. But um, you know, you just have to keep in mind that you know certain situations might decrease your DPS depending on how you play. All right, this is it for the group uh, for for the most part, and now let's go with the solo setup here. Uh, so most things are relatively similar, but as I mentioned at the start, a few things um, also change. Uh, most importantly, Captain Crimson. Um, Captain Crimson just makes your life a lot easier, and uh, you know it gives it a bit of damage buff, damage reduction, more cooldown. Uh, you know, it's all just really nice. And uh, you know, instead of going like, full DPS with um, convention, etc., you just go for this basically, and you you skip the convention. Uh, you have Ring of Royal Grandeur, and you focus more on like the average DPS. You don't go for like the really big booms with the barb and so on. But here, you want to DPS all the time, basically. So there's no convention. We have Ring of Royal Grandeur, and the set. And uh, of course, you need a stricken because somehow you have to kill the Rift Guardian, and uh, you'll skip the Pain Enhancer. Although I believe that um, it, it could happen that people actually run Pain Enhancer over Enforcer or Ben Trapped, and, uh, and most likely over Enforcer. 
and um, you know this might be like some really high end you know super fishy setup where you know you 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 you, ju you go for the absolute juice rift where you know pain Hansa actually gives you like on average much more dps than any of the other gems and i could actually see that happen um it, originally i thought this would be the setup anyway for solo um but you know since they changed the build to um not benefit from attack speed as much anymore because um you know previously you could stack your mana regeneration quite high with fast attack speed and now mana regeneration is pretty pointless um, so we'll see if that happens, just something to, to keep in mind. Although, um, especially early on, the build will be very squishy and you might not have the right rolls on your gear, uh, especially like cooldown and so on. You do have quite some, you know, like cooldown requirements, I would say, um, depending on how many kills you get with Grave Injustice. Uh, so Gogok might actually be a very nice option uh, to use uh, instead of Enforcer. Um, since you you know you don't really care about the pet take less damage because you don't have any um, that that can die at least, and um, I would definitely recommend uh, Gogok if you're struggling to survive, and it will also help you know keeping up your uh, big bad voodoo. It will keep up the spirit walk, etc. It gives you some dodge. It's just an overall pretty subtle gem for this build, and uh, definitely something that you can you know swap in um, for like the, the early pushes when you're very squishy. A few other changes are also on the passives. Uh, so you take Spirit Wrestle and you take um, Swamplight at Humans. Um, maybe later on you don't really need um, uh, any of them anymore, but uh, I would definitely recommend this, especially early season. Um, the defense you get is quite a lot, um, especially from Swamplight at Humans. Um, I think it stacks up to 30 times, so you get tons of resistance on this. But keep in mind, it only buffs the resistances that also deal with your own damage. So this is Poison, Fire, Cold, Physical and you are very weak to lightning and arcane beams. Arcane beams, you know, you usually want to avoid them anyway, and aside from the beams, there's not really many sources of arcane damage, but lightning is actually very dangerous, and you want to try to stack some lightning resistance um, as a result. Uh, lightning resistance, you know, there's thunderstorm, there's certain enemies that have lightning damage, there's orbiter that, you know, if it spawns on you, it will immediately kill you. So try to get some lightning resistance if you can, and um, that's much more important than any of the other resistances. And also you want to change your Spirit Barrage to the Manitou Rune because in Solo you don't have to deal with um, the lag so much or like at all, I don't think it should lag. So uh, Manitou is actually very nice uh, single target DPS but um, it's very weak in, in uh, like AoE situations. So this is why we skip it in group uh, to avoid the lags. But in Solo this is very nice, especially for the Rift Guardian and uh, you, you want to use this. It will do it will deal like roughly, uh, I think, I don't know, one third to 40 uh, percent or so of the Rift Guardians HP. Um, they nerfed it a little bit in the last patch, but um, not very significantly, so it's still quite good for the single target DPS. Also, we have Piranhas here. Um, we don't have the Haunt. Um, you can you can run Haunt if you want, but Piranhas is probably the better choice. It gives you some um, you know control over the, the battlefield. Uh, you can you know, pull enemies on top of your Phantasms. Um, you know, you crowd control them with the pull. You apply some damage uh, buff effect. It's quite nice. Um, overall, you could also run Haunt here, or you could replace Locust Swarm with Haunt. So either in Locust Swarm, um, I chose the Pestilence rune here. I think it's going to be the best setup because basically you do like one Pestilence cast, and you know it will spread everywhere. Um, theoretically, you can also go for um, the Creeping Death setup again with the Physical rune. Um, so that's that's up to you. Uh, you. But you would have to swap out one of the passives. Um, but Haunt also works. And Haunt has uh, one very strong rune, um, which is the Consuming Spirit rune. Um, it gives you a lot of life regen. So when you have like 50 targets haunted with Creeping Death and you know they will never run out, you, you get something like 100k plus life per second. So especially early on when you're squishy and you're struggling with uh, you know the right rolls on your gear, you don't have life per hit, you might be learning the build and so on. Uh, Haunt is actually a very solid choice. Uh, simply because you can, you know, stack up more and more uh, life per second uh, to the point where, you know, anything that doesn't want to do, um, you know, will not kill you, basically. Uh, you know, as long as you have enough targets um, on the battlefield uh, and you're haunted, um, you will you'll get a lot of uh, life regeneration like this. And it's definitely a solid choice as well. So either uh, replacing Locust Swarm uh, with Haunt or you can replace the Piranhas with Haunt. Aside from that, um, there's not really uh, many differences in the, the setup, but uh, as I mentioned, you don't have Convention of Elements here, so basically you're nuking all the time. 
so you have to make your own pulls. You have no one keeping alive. You have no one putting monsters for you. You have to do it yourself. Um, so you know, tr you try to apply your ring of emptiness effect and once again um, as fast as possible. And usually it should be easy with Locust Swarm, but if you chose uh, the, the Haunt version, then um, yeah, you'd have to do a lot of Haunt casts to make sure you, um, you you actually apply to everything because you have to do it to every single target individually to get the effect. And that will um, that, that means you have to be very careful about you know not running too far away of the enemies to you know not lose the effect again and so on. So keep that in mind. But otherwise, um, you know, just basically the same thing. Uh, pop down the three phantasms and uh, you know, try to keep them on top of the enemies or like where the most enemies are clustered. Uh, you can use the Piranado to uh, you know pull more enemies on top of your explosions when your phantasms are about to run out, or you can also force explode them um, when they're about to run out. Uh, so that, you know you can you can time these things a little bit to um, optimize the damage. Yeah, and that's it for this guide. I hope you liked it. I know it's quite long. There's a lot of details and you know a lot of information. Um, I, I consider it splitting it up in two parts, but um, it would basically just be repeating the same thing um, a lot for, for, for both. So um, I decided to do it in one video. Uh, hope you liked it. Uh, let me know what you think if you have any questions. Uh, you know, I might make like some kind of like update um, later on in the season uh, because I'll be playing the build myself. Like I, I'm actually looking forward to pushing Soda Witch Doctor and also play it in group. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing. And you know there might be you know some other things that we discover uh, on the way, so uh, stay tuned for that. And otherwise, you know I hope you'll enjoy my solo clears as always. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked it, and I'll see you guys next time.